In this video, we're going to configure monitoring using the Prometheus and Grafana applications to monitor our Minecraft server. And then we're going to set up an alert to alert us anytime our server goes down. This video is part three in a series of videos that I am calling Running Minecraft in Production. And the goal of these videos is one, to help you run Minecraft in a more predictable manner, but two, to help introduce you to some of the concepts and the applications that we use within the information technology, cybersecurity, and software development industries. So for this video, we're going to be setting up monitoring and alerting on our Minecraft server. If you followed along with the last video, you should have a running modded Minecraft server running. We're going to deploy two applications, and those are Prometheus and Grafana. And then we're going to scrape the metrics from our Minecraft server, send those over to a dashboard to be queried and analyzed, and then we're going to set an alert to be notified if our Minecraft server goes down through Discord. So what is Prometheus and Grafana? A quick overview before we begin. Prometheus is a monitoring and alerting application that allows us to scrape data from targets such as servers and applications and store that data in a time series database, Prometheus, to then later be queried and analyzed by some other system or application. Grafana allows us to visualize data by creating real-time charts, graphs, and dashboards. What we do is we connect Grafana to data sources, in our case, Prometheus, the time series data source, and then we query Prometheus's data with Grafana to display it in a dashboard in a meaningful way. And with Grafana, we can also set up alerts to notify us when certain events happen. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do is deploy Prometheus. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the top here in Docker Desktop, and we're going to search for Prometheus. We're going to be using the Bitnami Prometheus container image, and we want latest. So we're going to go ahead and hit run. For our settings, we're just going to go ahead and call the container Prometheus. And we're going to bind the container port to the same port on our system, so 9090. And we're not going to do anything with host path or variables yet. We're going to hit run. And the Prometheus application should run uh, and start fairly quickly. And the equivalent Docker CLI command to run this container without Docker desktop would be docker run-d dash 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 name Prometheus dash p port 9090 on our host system mapped to port 9090 on the container. And then the name of the container as it exists out on the Bitnami namespace on Docker Hub. So we can see my Prometheus container is running. So with our container running, we should now be able to go to a web browser on our host machine, and we should be able to type localhost colon 9090. And localhost just means our computer and the port on the computer we would like to connect to. And we can see that Prometheus is up. Next, we're going to deploy the Grafana application. On a container so we're going to go up here to the search bar in docker desktop and we're going to search for grafana and we're just going to take the first result grafana grafana and we're going to run we're just going to call this container grafana and we're going to map it to the host port 3000 and we're going to leave volume environment variable alone for now we're going to hit run and our grafana application should launch and start fairly quickly and the equivalent Docker CLI command to run this container would be the docker run d dash dash name grafana dash p port 3000 colon port 3000 grafana slash grafana. Now that our grafana container is running, again, we can go to a web browser on our system. We can go to a local web browser on our host system, and we can go to localhost colon 3000 in our browser. And this will bring us to the login screen for grafana. And the default username and password should just be admin admin. You'll be prompted for a new password. Go ahead and input that. And now we're inside of the Grafana application. Once Grafana is up and you've logged in, our next step is to connect the Prometheus data source to our Grafana application so we can query the data being gathered by Prometheus once we hook it up to Minecraft. To do that on the left here, we will go to connections, data sources, add data source, and we'll click Prometheus. I'll just leave the name as Prometheus. And because Prometheus is running on my local host, I can simply say HTTP localhost 9090. And then I should be able to hit save and test and connect, but I can't. And this is expected because of the way we're doing our Docker networking. So this Prometheus server URL uh, most likely will never be localhost unless you're testing something out on your local system, because localhost also resolves to 127.0.0.1, which is only valid 
on the computer that you're running from. This is the loopback address. That's why when we put localhost up here and we hit save and test down here, it resolves to 127.0.0.1. So this server URL can be any valid DNS name or IP address. And preferably we want it to be a DNS name because IP addresses change, right? If we look at the Prometheus Grafana with a Docker PS and we get the Prometheus container name, Prometheus, and then we say Docker inspect Prometheus, we get some information about the Prometheus container. And we can see that within this Docker network, this local Docker network that was created, that our Grafana container has an IP address of 172.17.0.2. So alternatively, I could also tell Grafana to connect, connect to Prometheus on that 172 address. But again, we would prefer a DNS address because IP addresses change. And especially with containers, usually they're going and they're coming and they're going and they're coming and they're getting new IP addresses every time. And we can see that the Grafana container belongs to the bridge network. And right now, the way we have this set up is the Minecraft server is currently running in a different Docker network than the Grafana and Prometheus containers. And those networks have not been configured to talk to each other. So to solve the issue of our Grafana application, not being able to connect to our Prometheus data source and also to solve the IP address changing, us preferring a DNS name over an IP address, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own Docker network and we're gonna go ahead and put Prometheus and Grafana and Minecraft all inside of that same Docker network. So I'll stop the Prometheus and Grafana containers. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete them. Now we're going to create a new Docker network and move our Minecraft server into that. And that's where we're going to put the Grafana and Prometheus containers as well. So in our Docker compost file from earlier videos, we're going to go ahead and add a networks section under our Minecraft service. Make sure it's under the Minecraft service. I'm going to hit tab and then we're going to call this network Minecraft and I'm going to colon hit tab again and we're going to say aliases and this will be the alias the network alias within the Docker network for the Minecraft application and we'll we'll see those in a minute so colon enter tab dash Minecraft so when the Minecraft container starts it will go inside of the Minecraft network, and then we can start referencing it by its network alias, Minecraft, which is equivalent to like a DNS record within uh, Docker. Next, outside of the services block, right? So a whole new section here. We're gonna provide networks tab. Again, Minecraft colon tab name Minecraft. So this section is the section in the Docker Compose where we are defining our networks to create. And then this section belongs to our Minecraft service. And we are telling our Minecraft service which network we want it to belong to and the settings for it within that network. In our case, a network alias of Minecraft. Once we've added that, we can go ahead and run a Docker Compose up D and that will reconfigure our Minecraft server and now when we run Docker Compose, we can see that network Minecraft is being created as well. And the equivalent command to uh, creating a Docker network with Docker CLI is just simply Docker network create. And then you would provide those options. So now if we type Docker network LS to list our Docker networks, we can see that the Minecraft network has been created. And then we can say Docker network inspect Minecraft and we can get some more information about this, but we can also see that the containers running within our network are the MC Docker Minecraft one container. So now that we have created our Docker network where we're gonna put all the stuff and it should be noted that going forward with this video series, everything we do on our local system with Docker desktop from here on out, we're gonna put all of those containers within the Minecraft network. They're all gonna be in the same network. So now let's go ahead and add our Prometheus and Grafana applications to our Docker compost file. So we're gonna add a new service here uh, under the services section. So one tab over right in line with Minecraft here, we're gonna define our Prometheus application or service. For image, we're gonna use Bitnami Prometheus.
And you know what, I'm just going to copy uh, all of this here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the environment section for now because we don't need it. Uh, I will also get rid of the volume section for now because we don't need it. We'll keep restart and we want the same network. Uh, so I'll change the port here. This is Prometheus. So we want 9090 on our system. Map to 90 or bound to 9090 on the container. And we want the network alias to be Prometheus. All right. And then we can take that service and we can, again, one tab over within the services section, still in line with our Minecraft service. We want to add that. Oh, yeah, we want to add that. And we're going to change this to Grafana. And this image comes from the Grafana namespace within Docker Hub. Grafana. And the image name is Grafana. And we'll change the port. This is port 3000 and port 3000. We'll keep the restart policy and we will make the alias uh, Grafana. All right, so now we're ready to run Docker Compose up. And now you really get to see the magic of Docker Compose, right? We just launched uh, two more applications on top of Minecraft all at once. So we did a whole stack at once. And we can see they all are falling under this MC Docker here. So now back in our browser, we can see Prometheus is back up and Grafana is back up. Again, we'll log in with admin admin, change the password if you wish. And then again, under connections, data sources, add new data source, Prometheus, we'll keep it named Prometheus, HTTP, colon backslash backslash now, because we've created that network alias, we should be able to say Prometheus 9090, probably help if I could spell Prometheus. And then we can hit save and test. And now we have successfully queried the Prometheus API. So now if we go back to data sources, we can see our data source is configured now the equivalent Docker CLI command to run the Prometheus container would be Docker run dash D, the name of the container, network you would like to add it to with dash dash network, dash dash network dash alias, the network alias, and then the port and then the container image. And then this would be the equivalent Docker CLI command to launch that Grafana container within the Minecraft network. So to recap, we've created a Docker network. We have moved our Minecraft server into that Docker network. We have launched a Grafana and Prometheus container inside of the Minecraft network, and we have connected Prometheus to Grafana so Grafana can start querying Prometheus's data. Now we have to configure Minecraft so that we can get the data off of the Minecraft application with Prometheus. In other words, so Prometheus can start scraping Minecraft. So to get Prometheus uh, scraping our Minecraft server, it's a two-step process. We have to create a uh, Prometheus configuration file and tell it where to look for the data to scrape, in our case, our Minecraft server, and we also have to export that data or give our Minecraft server the ability to export that data through a mod or a plugin, depending on if you're on Forge or Bucket or Spigot. So because we're doing Forge, we're gonna start with Forge. So. If you go to Curse Forge and you look for the Prometheus Exporter mod, uh, go ahead and look for the same version mod that matches your Minecraft server. So we are running 1.19.2. So I need 1.19.2 of Prometheus Exporter. Go ahead and download that mod. And within that Minecraft data folder on your local system that is uh, mapped to the slash data volume within your Minecraft container, go into the mods folder and just go ahead and drop that Prometheus exporter mod into that folder. Uh, make sure you don't have any extra characters in there, such as like I had already done this a couple of times. So my file downloaded with uh, parentheses two, um, that will make your mod unreadable and it will break your server. And this mod is actually going to create a configuration file that we can look at uh, once we restart our Minecraft server. 
So now that I've dropped that mod in there, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, restart the Minecraft server container here. So once your Minecraft server is restarted and that Prometheus exporter mod is loaded, you will get an additional config file in world server config, and that will be called Prometheus exporter server .toml. And if we open this up, it has some settings that we can adjust um, or reference. And we're going to need this because when we configure Prometheus and tell it, hey, look at Minecraft on this port and begin scraping data, this is the port that Minecraft uh, is listening on. So we're going to need this port. We're going to tell Prometheus to scrape data from our Minecraft server on this port. So I'll close that file. So to create a configuration for Prometheus to tell it where to scrape the Minecraft data from, uh, we're going to need to create a, another volume mount to mount uh, Etsy Prometheus within our container, uh, Prometheus container to Etsy Prometheus or somewhere on our local system. The same way we did with the Minecraft server so that our data persists, so that if our Prometheus container ever gets destroyed, we don't lose the configuration and then have to rewrite it again every time the container goes away and comes back. So to do that, pick somewhere on your computer, create a folder, um, and take note of that. I've created uh, Prometheus here on my F drive. And then within that folder, you're going to want to go ahead and create a Prometheus.yml file or Prometheus.yml. And within that file, you're going to put this configuration. So global and scrape interval, this is how often Prometheus is going to reach out to Minecraft and scrape the metrics. And this is the actual section uh, where we're telling Prometheus how to connect to Minecraft. Um, so if we remember that configuration file on our Minecraft server that we looked at earlier uh, was port 19565. So that is the port that we're going to configure here. And then this is the uh, this can be the IP address of the Minecraft server, but remember that changes. So we usually don't want to reference things by IP address. We want to do DNS names, or in our case, that network alias we created earlier, right? So my network alias uh, for my Minecraft server is Minecraft, and that's essentially my DNS address. So um, this will always connect to Minecraft no matter uh, if my container restarts a million times. And label is just, uh, you know, we'll have a label of server name Minecraft Docker that will be appended to the data. Um, so we'll see that label when we query it with Grafana. So go ahead and save that. And then within our Docker Compose file, right, for our Prometheus container, uh, we're going to add a volume section. So I'm actually just going to copy the volume section from the Minecraft service. And I'm going to go ahead and add that uh, to my Prometheus service. Uh, and we're going to say um, attach at uh, my F drive Prometheus, uh, specifically Prometheus, Prometheus dot YML on my local machine to Etsy Prometheus, Prometheus dot YML within the container. So now every time this container restarts or comes up, um, it will use the prometheus.yaml file on my computer. And then additionally, because the metrics are going to be accessed on a new port on our Minecraft server, right? We need to also add that port to our Minecraft container. So we'll add this port uh, in our configuration file here to our Minecraft server uh, configuration in the Docker Compose. So we can expose that port container port so we can access it with Prometheus. So once I've added that, now I can run docker compose up D and that'll recreate my Prometheus container to use the new configuration. Okay, so now that we have restarted Minecraft and Prometheus and Prometheus is scraping Minecraft, or at least it should be, we can come up here in Prometheus and go to status and we can look at configuration and we can see that yes, the configuration has been applied correctly and then we can go to service discovery and we can see that one out of one active targets Minecraft has been discovered by Prometheus. So now that Prometheus is scraping the Minecraft data, we can come up here to the top left and we can click dashboards. On the right here, click new and new folder and we're gonna create a new folder for all of our Minecraft related dashboards and we'll hit create. And then again on the right here, we'll hit import 
And then we're going to go ahead and grab a public Minecraft dashboard from the Grafana site. So over here at this link, and I'll put this in the uh, GitHub readme for this video as well, and which will be in the link in the description. And we're going to go over here and we're going to copy the ID. Um, or optionally, you can download the JSON for this dashboard, but we're going to copy ID. And then back in Grafana, we're going to paste that ID of that dashboard, or optionally, if you opted to download the JSON, you would paste that JSON here. And then I'm going to hit load. And then this would be the name of the dashboard, Minecraft server stats. And then we're going to pick our Prometheus data source, which is the one that we had configured. And then we're going to hit import. Now you can see my dashboard says up for three hours. Um, that is because I had to walk away right after we redeployed Prometheus with the scraping configuration. Um, but yours should look just like this. So we get our Minecraft status. Is it up or down? How long has it been up for? Uh, we can see our server tick rate, chunks loaded, heap memory and non-heap memory, right? A lot of good data coming in here that we can use. And then as always, we want to make this Grafana configuration persistent so that if our Grafana container explodes, we don't lose our dashboard and our data and have to reconfigure our data sources, import our dashboard again, all that jazz, create our alerts again. So again, like we did for Minecraft and Prometheus on our local system, and for me on my uh, F drive, I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call it Grafana, and that is what I'm going to map my Grafana data into. So back here on the Docker Compost file, I'm going to grab the uh, Prometheus volume section. I'm going to go down to Grafana, and I'm just going to paste that in there. And then I'm going to modify this to, say, uh, Grafana, because that is where I want this data to go on my local system. And then we're going to actually map this to var lib Grafana within the Grafana container. And we're going to run Docker Compose up. All right, Grafana has restarted, so we'll go ahead and log in. Um, we do have to redo everything uh, that we did before. Uh, but then after we do that, we shouldn't need to redo it again. So we'll test that. So we need to first do a connection, data sources. We need to add Prometheus again. HTTP colon backslash backslash Prometheus. 9090. We'll connect that, save and test. All right, that's there. We'll go to dashboards, create a new project or new folder, uh, Minecraft, and then we'll hit create. We'll import, we'll grab that ID. Paste that ID in there, get our dashboard. And we're up. All right. So now let's test our uh, persistent data. All right, so now let's check our folder. We do see some data here. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually uh, delete the Grafana container. Um, so if our data wasn't persistent, it should have all just been deleted. I'll do a Docker Compose up again that will recreate the Grafana container. And then let's go check out our Grafana. And we can see that uh, if we go to home, um, let's see, connections. We do still have a Prometheus data source and our dashboard should still exist and it does. Uh, so our Grafana configurations or Grafana data is now persistent. Now for the last part of this video, we're gonna set up an alert. So when our Minecraft server goes down or up, uh, we're gonna get a Discord message. You can set this up um, for multiple different things, not just Discord, uh, however, I feel like Discord is something a lot of people use, so we're gonna go with that. So to set up an alert within Grafana, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click something that we're interested in alerting upon. So for us, that is the status of Minecraft. So we're gonna go to edit on status. And then on the right here, um, if we scroll all the way down, for this up status, right, it is this is the visualization type stat up here. Um, it has some threshold set, so it's green when it's one and it's red when it's zero or vice versa. It's zero when it's red and it's uh, one when it's green. Um, so that's what kind of what we want to alert on. When we hit zero, we want to alert down. When we hit one, we want to alert up. 
So over here on the left, we'll go to alerting. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an alert rule. So this is essentially where we're creating uh, what do you want to monitor uh, and when do you want to set off an alert? So we're going to call this uh, Minecraft down. And it's going to be a Grafana managed alert. And Prometheus should already be uh, selected as the data source. So what we're going to do is we're going to select a metric here. And the metric we're looking for here is up. And then the label we're going to select is a instance. And then we're going to select Minecraft 19565. So that's all we need to do for this A block here. And then this B block here, we're going to keep function last and input A. And here we're saying get the last status of the up metric because that is A, right? Get the last status of A. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that last status from B as the input. And if it is below one, right? then that will be our alert condition. We're going to choose the Minecraft folder for our rule here. And then for evaluation group name, no. we're just going to type MC eval and we're going to hit add new and we're going to leave this at one minute. And then we're also going to set this for one minute. So this rule will be evaluated every minute. And then if, this rule decides we need to alert that Minecraft is down before alerting. It will wait one minute before alerting just in case Minecraft comes back up. Optionally, you could set this to zero seconds. So as soon as Minecraft was detected down, it would immediately fire. However, Minecraft usually, at least in our case, the server is taking a few minutes to come back. So if we're evaluating every minute and then alerting immediately, we're going to be sending uh, multiple alerts in that downtime. So it depends. Do you want to be notified immediately? Um, and then it, maybe if you do, maybe you want to extend the evaluation interval a little longer. Um, it all just depends on what you want. Now that our rule, our alert rule is set, we need to go ahead. <clears throat> now that our alert rule is set, we need to go ahead and configure a contact point. Uh, who and at what address is going to be alerted uh, when a rule uh, needs to be alerted upon. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a new contact point and I'm going to call this discord and I'm going to say discord because that is a valid integration type, but you know, we have other things here. We've got Microsoft teams, we've got pager duty, Slack, uh, email, right? A bunch of different things we can do. So I need to get my discord webhook URL and you need to go ahead and find a discord server that you have, uh, certain permissions in and then go ahead and click on the server settings option and then you're going to want to click on integrations and you're going to want to go to webhooks and then go ahead and hit create webhook if you don't see integrations or you can't hit create webhook it just means you don't have permissions to do so on that server so a webhook has been created so i'll click on it and i'm going to rename this to uh grafana and then select what channel you want to send this webhook to i'm sending it to general and then just go ahead and copy that webhook URL. And that's what we're going to provide to Grafana. So back in Grafana, we're going to paste our webhook URL. And then under optional Discord settings, right, we want to give some meaning to this alert. So what's the alert title going to be when it comes through on the Discord side? So this is going to be Minecraft is down. Um, and then we can add more information like Graf oh, Grafana is reporting that the minecraft server is down all right and we'll save that contact point so now with an alert rule created and a contact point created it's time to link the two how do we tell which alert to use which contact point we'll do that through a notification policy so over here on the right we'll create a new nested policy and we have to use a label that's tied to our alert. So real quick, we'll hit cancel and I'll go to alert rules and I'll expand this Minecraft eval rule we created and we can see some labels here. So alert name equals Minecraft down, right? So I'll actually go ahead and click and copy this label here. And then again, new nested policy, 
So the label will be alert name and it will equal Minecraft down. And then we'll choose our contact point, Discord, and then we'll save that policy. Um, so now we have successfully tied this alert rule to this contact point. So let's go ahead and test it, shall we? Um, so here's the dashboard. Let's go ahead and not delete the Minecraft container, but let's go ahead and stop it. Uh, should go to down. And I believe we're scraping metrics every 30 seconds, so it's going to take at least 30 seconds uh, for this status to show down. And then it'll take about another minute after that for our alert to come through. So we can see that the dashboard now shows down and it's going to take uh, two minutes for this alert to pop off uh, because remember the rule is that uh, we're going to evaluate every minute and then we're going to wait a minute before we actually fire. Uh, so at most this should take two minutes once it shows down and there we go. We can see that Grafana is reporting that the Minecraft server is down. Minecraft is down. Now what you're gonna end up seeing is that your Minecraft is down alert is going to fire twice. So you're gonna get this red one, the original one, like we just showed you, but you're also going to get a green one with the same message. And this is called a resolution alert. So for every contact point, right? This one is the Discord contact point that we're using to alert that Minecraft is down. There's a notification section here if you choose to disable resolved messages, that will prevent you from getting that, hey, something happened message, and then, hey, whatever happened isn't happening anymore message. Sometimes it's desired, sometimes it's not. You could equate that green Minecraft is down to, hey, Minecraft is up. Now, that was for uh, Forge only. If you're a spigot or bucket person and you need the spigot or bucket plugin, uh, you're going to have to go ahead and actually there is a Minecraft Prometheus exporter for you as well. So I'll, I'll put this link uh, in the GitHub repo down in the description below as part of the links for this particular video. Um, but they have everything you need to get started here. Uh, essentially, what you will need to do is you'll have to install this plugin in your Minecraft server container in the uh, plugins folder. Uh, then you'll have this config file. Uh, and you'll see port 9940. So you'll have to go ahead and add that to your Minecraft server Docker Compose ports section. And then you also have to configure your Prometheus side to use that port instead of the one we did for Forge. And then you'll have to go ahead and import uh, this dashboard here. Um, so I'll, again, I'll put a link to this repo so you can go through this readme and see how you can set up these Prometheus uh, and Grafana metrics scraping and everything uh, with a bucket or spigot Minecraft server.